Her name was Maria Esperanza de Bianchini of Caracas, Venezuela. Mystic layperson, visionary, refuge for souls, servant of God. Esperanza's earthly mission was one that required a great task, and it came only after early life experiences in which God was purifying and ultimately preparing her for the spiritual work in which she would be entrusted. In her youth, Esperanza experienced a severe heart condition and pneumonia, which nearly terminated her life. Well, I think every Christian comes to an understanding that um, to follow Christ and to be a disciple of Christ uh, means an acceptance, at least a partial acceptance, of also carrying his cross. My guess is that she uh, understood, even at a young age, especially around the age of 12, 13 years old, when she experienced, as you mentioned, the pneumonia and, and other medical conditions, that that would be part of what the Lord would ask of her. The one that was rather decisive, uh, I believe it was the, the first one, uh, she was fairly young, when she was uh, in very, very bad condition with bronchial pneumonia, where she offered herself to her Blessed Mother. And there was a certain uh, unity of her heart with Our Lady's heart in that, in that moment, which was transformative and, and gave Maria Spronza certain virtues or qualities that are similar to our Blessed Mother's, the love for souls, compassion, uh, a sense of spiritual motherhood for, for others to guide them to Christ and a, a great desire to see everyone enjoy the, the, the beatific vision someday. And a spiritual mother she would certainly become, shepherding souls, transmitting charity and goodness, and enabling others to see their own divine purpose, to give, to pray, to love. Of course, all of this would be facilitated by the act of God firsthand in Esperanza's life. From a very early age, Maria Esperanza was imbued with mystical gifts and experienced numerous supernatural manifestations, which she used solely for the glory of God and for the good of others. Well, it's important to realize that when someone has these special gifts like she had of uh, visions and revelations, ability to read souls, uh, predict the future, the gift of prophecy, even the gift of healing, and other extraordinary mystical gifts, she had many of them, that they are given freely by God for the benefit of the faithful. They're uh, not a proof necessarily of sanctity, but they are a proof of the ac action of God in that person's life. Perhaps the crux of Maria Esperanza's earthly mission was her establishment of the Batani Foundation on April 29, 1979, a lay movement designed to foster brotherly unity and family reconciliation. Inspired by the reception of messages directly from the Virgin Mary, Esperanza would become the mediator between God and his people in order to promote reconciliation. March 25, 1984 was a momentous period in the life of the Batania Foundation, this specific day bearing witness to the essential nature of its mission, the public appearance of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Batania, Venezuela with a message of worldly reconciliation. Her self-proclaimed title, Mary, Virgin Reconciler of All Peoples and Nations. God is giving special graces, first of all, by sending his mother to the earth in such a dramatic way, with such frequency, with a particular message. So the message is very, very clear, um, as connected to Our Lady's title, Virgin, Reconciler of All Peoples and Nations. Our Lady has well, she sent forth Maria Spronza to be a missionary of hope, a missionary of, of the unity of the healing of the family, the unity of the family, and the reconciliation across the entire human family as well. I think that my grandmother um, was the main visionary of the apparition in Batania, and Our Lady gave her the message of reconciliation because I think her main mission and what she, what she left the world as, I think, the biggest lesson was her family. She used this reconciliation message through her family. She kept a family that is so big. Our family is huge. She kept her family together. For the remainder of her life, Maria Esperanza would continue to be a vessel of hope and a medium through which God would communicate to humanity 
how to go about achieving worldly reconciliation. During the last years of her life, Esperanza fell victim to Parkinson's disease, which was the cause of her death on August 8, 2004. Her cause for canonization for sainthood had begun just shortly after, and on January 31, 2010, during a ceremonial mass in Metuchen, New Jersey, the church officially recognized Maria Esperanza as servant of God, the first of four steps to sainthood. On our part, what we try to do, that, that is the petitioners of the cause, the people who are, who are presenting this candidate to the church, uh, attempt to prove two things, the fame of sanctity and the fame of intercession. I think that it's uh, providential that the church is uh, looking into her life and the cause has begun already over two years ago that she's been declared servant of God because as it progresses and as she eventually is uh, beatified and maybe canonized, she'll be a, an incredible uh, role model for many, many people. Servant of God, Maria Esperanza, an instrument of God, a light to the world, Mary's hope.